so much for joining today on my channel. Uh, I'm Rachel from at Tomato Cakes on Poshmark and you can follow me on Instagram for Poshmark reselling tips at the curated tomato. Um, welcome! Today I am going to answer some of your questions. So I posted on my Instagram stories not too long ago Hey, ask me questions, whatever you've got about Poshmark reselling, stuff like that, and I will answer them in a YouTube video. So that's what I'm doing today. I uh, got several responses from you guys, and thanks for taking the time to send me a question. And if I don't get to it on this one, I'll try to get to it another time. Or you can DM me, and I'll try to answer your question that way. So, um, Thrift Success asks how to get repeated customers. And I think that the biggest uh, part of getting customers to come back to your closet is um, making sure that the item that you ship is exactly what was described in the listing. If somebody bundles many items, then I usually will give them a much deeper discount. And if somebody spends a significant amount in my closet, then I am really careful to package it nicely, send them a thank you card. I don't do that with all of my packages. I mean, I always package them nicely, but I wrap it extra special and, um, try to make sure that it's a nice experience when they open the box and they want to come back. I also think that communication is really important and I try to make sure and notify the customers if there's a delay in shipping at all. I usually ship uh, same or next day depending on when the order is placed and if I'm not able to do that I make sure and contact them if there's any issues, I try to contact them. If I see that shipping, like tracking is delayed, I contact them and say, hey, I have shipped this, but tracking hasn't updated yet, just so that they know what's happening. Because I think that communication is one of the most important things to bring customers back. So um, that's really important. At the Hanger Habit asked, have you ever been unable to locate an item you sold? Yes. This actually just happened the other day. I sold a pair of Spanx, and you know how like small they fold up to be? And it turns out that they had gone up into my inventory in a bag, and I hadn't put the inventory number in the title, and so I had to dig through 30 Tupperware bins of clothes to find a tiny little pair of black Spanx, um, I was frustrated. That one took me like two days to ship because I couldn't find it. So I have had it happen before um, and I've never been able to find the item and so I just send the person a message and say I'm so sorry this doesn't usually happen. Um, is there something else that you'd like in my closet that I can substitute for it? Uh, if so I'll be happy to send that out for you or I can cancel the sale if you want. Um, Sometimes they find something that they would prefer. Um, usually I tell them in the same price point. Um, but hopefully if you can stay on top of your inventory, it doesn't happen too frequently. Shop Bloom's Room asked, Do you ENL, which is edit next list, which is a type of sharing. Um, and I used to do it a lot more than I do now because... I have almost 1,300 active listings, and that's really hard to ENL every single one of them. It's faster to share. So um, edit next list is when you tap at the top of your um, to your listing, and you tap at the top edit as if you were going to change something, and then you just tap next, and then you just have list. And that's the edit, ENL, edit next list method. So I will do it sometimes during parties, just the items like the brand specific parties, I will do that um, because it does bring it higher up in the searches. When you do that, it refreshes it differently than just sharing. So sometimes if I have just a small group of things like the brand parties or the specific style parties, I'll ENL just to that. Um, and that helps 
um, get more exposure. Fitness Ninja underscore asks, how can I get more sales on Poshmark? Well, I think that Poshmark requires a lot of consistency, um, whether it's consistency throughout your photos and having a, um, a consistent look so that somebody recognizes your pictures, which is kind of branding, or um, so that when they're scrolling through your closet, everything looks cohesive and kind of together. And being consistent with listing as well and sharing, being active on the app. So when I list every single day, then I get sales every single day. Um, and that's, I think, one of the most important things to do is list and share your own items. Okay, um, Ivy Untamed asked, how do you spend a normal day? What is your routine and how much time do you spend on Posh? I don't have like set specific times that I spend on Posh. Um, I'm on it through all throughout the day. Uh, I do have two kids and um, especially in the mornings, we do school, we go places. So I'm not on as much in the mornings um, unless they decided to entertain themselves with some toy or something. Um, and then in the afternoons when my daughter naps and my son has quiet time is time that I spend photographing and um, getting drafts ready to list at night after they go to bed. Um, sometimes I'll package things up in the morning. The kids like to help me with that. They love to stack the packages. I'm on it kind of throughout the day depending on what's happening with my kids. I don't have a set time. I try to have a routine of photographing in the afternoon while my kids are asleep or my daughter, my son dropped his nap now. I try to uh, have a routine with that and then I list at night um, just before I go to bed. I list the drafts. Thrifty Gifty Nikki, is it worth buying things with small stains? I mean it really depends on what the stains are. If it's just a makeup smudge, like you guys saw in my Instagram post recently, you can easily get something like that off with micellar water. If it's nail polish, no, you can't get that out. So I think it's very dependent on the fabric and the item, where the stain's located, and just what caused the stain. I typically try not to buy things that I know I'm going to have to spend a lot of time fixing, just because... Um, Time is money, and if I have to spend an hour working on something uh, that I might or might not get out, it's just not worth my time. So I think it's very dependent on the item, but most of the time I would say no. Okay, a Cali girl in Minnesota, MN, asked, what's your thoughts on having a niche for your closet? I don't feel like I specifically have a niche for my closet. Um, if I think it will sell, I will list it, even if it's not something that I like personally. I think it's beautiful to scroll through closets that have a niche that's like all boho or all, you know, street style or all vintage or whatever. It's beautiful to scroll through them, but don't limit yourself on money. Um, don't prevent yourself from being able to make a profit on something just because it's not a specific style that you necessarily like because there's people out there shopping that like everything and so uh, if you think it will sell if the comps look good pick it up is my opinion okay happily by Heidi asked have you always modeled your photos and how did you get started who takes the pictures um no I have not always modeled the photos the first year I, I really only started last summer uh, the first year and a half of doing this I just either I had a dress form and I've hung them on the wall I've done flat lays on the floor and I actually started modeling them just because I absolutely love um, Jen from Verdant North I love her closet I wish my closet looked like hers I love her neutral tones throughout and um, it just inspired me to start modeling and I was very uncomfortable with it um, at first but I've gotten more comfortable as time goes by and there's some days that I just don't feel like doing it because I just don't. Um, it does take more time and um, but I try to push through and because now I just really like the look of my closet with them modeled and um, it, it kind of makes me grumpy to have it any other way. 
uh, but that's just me and my neurosis taking over. Uh, who takes the pictures? I take the pictures. <laughs> I have a Bluetooth remote control. Sometimes you'll see it in my hand. I usually, I'm, I'm pretty good at hiding it, I think, but uh, sometimes you'll see it in my hand. And um, I have a tripod and my phone, and I take all of my own pictures. So when I do um, pictures, I take a lot. Like a lot. Like a thousand pictures for 50 some odd items because I just snap, 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 snap. So then I'll have to go through all of those and pick the best ones and then edit those. It's, it's a lot of work. Luna Archeek Luna Archeek asks best places to source. Um, I mean, it depends on what's available in your area. Um, I personally, I love sourcing online. I buy auction boxes, liquidation boxes online, and I love it because it just shows up to my doorstep. But I do still like, I enjoy thrifting and that experience. And so um, I love small specific charity thrift stores just because I have found that people who believe in a cause will travel to that specific place to donate um, even if it's not in a good part of town so you might find a place that looks kind of dumpy but people who believe in its in its purpose will travel to donate their clothes and a lot of times you find better items there. Matt Canary in a gold mine asked, what has been your worst buy and your best buy? Uh, worst buy, anything by Rachel Roy. Anything. Uh, Cynthia, anybody, Cynthia Steph, Cynthia Rowley, Cynthia uh, Vincent, anything by Cynthia is, is cursed for me. What has been my best buy? I would say probably this um, belt that I found. It was a Barry Kieselson cord. I didn't really know about it at the time, but it was alligator leather. It looked quality. So it was something I picked up last year. I was still fairly new to this and then realized more about what I had that this was like a very expensive belt. Um, and it took a while to sell, but I'm happy to sit on items like that and wait for the right buyer to come along because they're happy, they got a great deal, and I'm happy I made a good profit. So um, probably that was one of my best flips. Final question that this is something that many people asked, um, and, and so I'm not going to name all of them uh, just because I had so many people ask me the same question. But it was, how do you find balance with Tosh and your regular life? So, like, uh, work-life balance. Uh, I'm probably not a great person to ask that because I don't know that I have a great handle on a work-life balance. My problem is, is that I love it, and so it doesn't feel like work. And so somebody asks me, are you working? I'm like, no, I'm just, like, listing things. Well, that's work, but it doesn't feel like work. So... Um, I am trying to do better at it just so that I don't burn out um, and so that I can keep the joy in it. I'm trying to do better at it. I set timers for myself like okay uh, like the other day I had a huge backup of inventory. It had been bagged but I hadn't taken it upstairs to put like to separate out and so I was just like okay I'm setting the timer for 45 minutes and I've got to get all of this taken care of because I just can't work with it anymore. So, um, and I got it all done, and it's like the first time ever that I've had um, no inventory just like sitting for weeks. Like it's, it's all put away, and it's a great feeling. And so I'm um, trying very hard to kind of stay on task. Uh, last year I was diagnosed with um, ADHD or ADD, and I, um, it explains so much about me. <laughs> But um, it's something that I've dealt with my whole life and never really known. I was just always just like kind of, uh, I always have 
a new project or something coming up. So it's, I am not the most organized person, um, especially since I started working from home. I was much more organized uh, when I worked outside the home, like in my job, because I had all these things that I did to compensate for being ADD and not realizing it. So it's been a learning experience to uh, try to control it and learn how to improve my processes. And it's still a learning experience, something I'm still working on. So uh, I think every single one of us, so many people asked about work-life balance. So I think it's a very common problem. And, um, you know, I, I would love to hear what your tips are for maintaining a work-life balance. I do try to make sure and uh, spend as much time with my kids when they're awake as possible. Um, I have one day a week that they go to their grandma's and so I just like knock out a ton of work that day so that I don't have to feel as pressured um, when they're home to get that done. I do really have an issue with I stay up way too late uh, after they go to bed because I'm like I just need to finish working on this. I just need to take a few more pictures and then before I know it it's like one o'clock in the morning. And so I have been really trying hard to um, put my phone down, put my camera down, and stop, and go to bed on time, or sit down and, and do something with my husband, or, you know, not just work all the time, because it's hard, because I love it, and, um, so, <laughs> anyway, if you have tips about time management, or maintaining a work-life balance, put them in the comments, let's share to other people around us. Uh, because obviously it's something that we all struggle with. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for asking the questions. And um, I'll do this again sometime if you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video and leave a comment if you liked it. Have a great day. Bye.